tired lookout. Renias and Star Lowry were talking quietly to Carl D next morning when Duncan stormed up, followed by the handle. Hello, chuckled Renias. Here we go. I nearly came off, fumed Duncan. Those coaches pushed me. The thing controller says they didn't. He says I kept a bad lookout. We've no money to mend you, he said. But if it happens again, I'll leave you at the back of the shed. Why does he always pick on me? It's no fair. Starlery said nothing. He just winked at Renias. As you were saying, Caldi, remarked Renias, you had two coaches on your trial trip. Do you ever take more? Now our line is so steep, there were only allowed one. We each have our own. Mine's called Catherine, I know her well. That's most important. Why? asked the handle. There are only coaches. Ah, oh, said Caldi. Something more. You pull your coaches and you can see ahead. We push ours up so we can't see. They watch the line for us. The dark one is still, of course, but the captain is so clever that I know at once if anything is wrong. That must take a load off your mind, says Carlo. Coldy smiled, but not off my bubbles. Climbing is hard work and needs a lot of speed. My father and I have a tiring time. Coming down, he went on, it's different. Catherine and I just roll. We need no steam for that. The handle sighed enviously. Ah, oh, I should like that, he said. With your automatic brakes, it sounds like a rest cure. That, replied Caldy, was just the mistake poor Godred made. Who, asked the little engines, is Godred. Godred was our number one. And named after a king, Caldy replied. Perhaps that went to his smoke box and made him conceited. He'd never keep a good lookout. He'd roll down the line looking anywhere but at the track. You'll have an accident, I told him. Pooh, he said, I've got automatic brakes, haven't I? And driver's got his air brake, what more do you want? More sense from you, I said. No engine can stop at once if he isn't ready to obey his driver's controls. The first thing a young engine learns, agreed Starlowe. Godred never learnt sense. His driver and farman and the manager all spoke to him. They even took him to pieces to see if anything was wrong. But he still went on in the same old way. One day, I was going up and waited at the station for Godred coming down to pass me. As I waited, so it happened. No one was hurt. His coach stayed on the rails and the guard braked her to a stop. They brought Godred home next day. We've no money to mend you, said our manager, so you'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller till nothing was left. Well, well, what happened? Asked Duncan anxiously. It's not nice to talk about, said Caldy. But what happened? Why isn't it nice? Our drivers used Godred's parts to mend us, answered Caldy mournfully. Sir Handel and Duncan were unusually silent long after Caldy had gone home. Neither Scarloe nor Renius ever mentioned that Caldi had made the story up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>